Article 2. So I want to speak on Article 2, which is the union contract for Seacoast Educational Support Professionals Association, which was recommended by the Budget Committee 7 to 1. Hi. Ma'am, your name and address, please. Yep. Jacqueline McCoy, 10 Katie Lane. <clears throat> I'm the head of the paraprofessional union for SAU 90. I'm also a resident, a taxpayer, an SAU employee, a PTA member, a wife and a mother of three daughters that all attended the Hampton schools. I'm very involved in the school outside of my position. I'm a co-class advisor for the eighth grade class trip. This year marks my third time that I will co-advise this trip, twice to New York City, and now this year to Washington, D.C. Between these three trips, we have raised over $50,000 in funding that has gone 100% to the students. I co-advised the Hampton Academy Student Council. And this past November, we raised $450 for the homeless and less fortunate families in our own Hampton community so they could buy Thanksgiving turkeys. All the while, collecting enough food for 25 food baskets that went to these same families that attend our schools. Also, as an advisor of the Student Council, we just raised $300 from candy cane sales. And that money, along with the recent coat drive, is going to Hobbs House this week. I am also a board member of the nonprofit organization called Think, which stands for Teachers Helping Individuals, Neighbors, and Kids. Those familiar with the Thanksgiving, <coughs> excuse me, the Thanksgiving Day Road Race that was held two years in a row prior to our construction of our great building, um, that money went directly back into our community, over $6,000 each year. More recently, we had a, a chili cook-off that Think organized, teachers helping individuals, neighbors, and kids. And we raised money for a student at our Hampton Academy battling cancer. She was unable to pay for all of her cancer treatments, and we were able to get her $1,000. <coughs> Those are just a few of the extra things I do outside of my six and a half or 6.75 hours a day. Now that you know a little bit about me, I'd like to thank those who voted to recommend the Article 2, the contract for the paraprofessionals. With the vote 7 to 1 in favor, you're probably sitting there asking yourself, why did I decide to speak tonight? It's passed. What's the big deal? Well, I'm speaking because there was some concerns, discussion, and a lot of negativity about our contract. I must admit, I was shocked that such a small contract costing the taxpayers about a penny one cent per thousand would have caused such concern. And I admit, I did message someone, and I did talk to them, because they were my friend. After reflection, though, I realized that maybe it's not clear exactly what a paraprofessional does. So I thought I could come here tonight and shed some light. We are a group, no, we're a team of 50 of us. We work with the students are, that are at highest risk for most in, at, are at the highest risk and most in need. We as a group spend our days working with students directly one on one or with multiple children at one at one time. Okay? Our days aren't always easy. Let's face it. At any given moment, a child can have a meltdown. Many of these students suffer from trauma related stresses. We are their support system throughout the day, academically and emotionally. I've often been asked, how do you do it? Where do you find the patience? Why do you do this for such little pay? I could never do that all day. And then it's usually quickly followed up by, thank you so, mu so much for what you do. You're so good with these students. And even, thank God you were in the classroom today, because I have 25 other kids that need me, and you saved, you saved it. Again, we work with the students who are at the highest risk and most in need. I'm not sure I'm really getting my point across, so I'm just going to say it one more time. We work with the students who are at, most, at, who are at high risk and most in need. We, paraprofessionals, are the conduit and essential component of special education. Without us, who are highly qualified and a capable group, we are at a higher risk of having to send our students to an out-of-district placement. <coughs> Outsourcing is very expensive, people, to the taxpayers. Outsourcing is a much higher rate than the cost of us paraprofessionals. I do know that every single one of us, all 50 of us, make a huge difference in the life of children in our district every day. How do I know this, you're asking yourself? I know because I get emails, cards, letters, phone calls. I attend meetings with these parents. I still hear from the very first student in the district that I ever worked with 
That was over 12 years ago. They still thank me for the work, and it's a constant reminder to me why I do this. I am proud of all my students, past and present. And when I go out into the community and I see the results of all our hard work, I love when I bump into these kids. They're now adults working locally in our community in Hampton. And they stop me and they chat about what they're doing and they're so proud of themselves. <coughs> and they were at risk. And they beam with pride. And I know that I and all of us here in our community made a difference. I'm proud to be a paraprofessional. I don't make a lot of money. I appreciate everyone's support on Article 2, our contract. Article 2 in SAU 90 is about one cent per thousand on the current tax bill. The average cost of your house in Hampton would be four dollars a year. And it goes down. I guarantee this is the best value of four dollars that you will ever spend. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on Article 2? Do I see anyone else wishing to speak on Article 2?